Hello, this is Joe. Welcome back to the channel. You know, the other day, a really good friend of mine approached me and asked me if I would take an image of the Sombrero Galaxy. And the first thing that came to my mind was, why do you want a picture of the Sombrero Galaxy? I mean, it's pretty much, there's not a whole lot of color to it. And then there's just that dark stripe that goes across the side because it's an edge on galaxy. And so I asked him, I had to, you know, why do you want this? And he said that the galaxy just fascinated him. It had nothing to do with how pretty the image was or the color of the galaxy or anything. Just the fact that all of that dark dust and cloud is, is so thick around the galaxy that it actually blocks out all of that light. And that we could capture it in an image is just amazing to him. And so he wanted, he asked me if I would capture it. So of course I couldn't say no. Uh, it's not one of my favorites, but it, I mean, no one's even asked me before for a specific image. So I'm gladly going to be imaging the Sombrero Galaxy tonight, if at all possible. I've got about one night of clear skies, so tonight's it. Luckily, I don't need a whole lot of time on this particular galaxy. And then um, it's late May and we're actually supposed to get a giant snowstorm, so. Uh, this will be my last image for a few days. Uh, but I'm pretty excited actually now, looking back on it, to take this image. And because the second thing I thought of after uh, why do you want an image of the, of the Sombrero Galaxy, and then when he told me, you know, all the dust around it and everything, the next thing that popped into my mind was Star Trek's The Galactic barrier and so I had to go look up the galactic barrier because uh, I remember as a kid watching uh, Star Trek reruns about the galactic barrier and this thing just reminded me of it when you know when you're looking at images of the sombrero galaxy that's the first thing that pops into my head And so I went to look it up and to my surprise, there actually, it, it's not an actual galactic barrier like in Star Trek, but in the 60s, the astronomer Vera Rubin uh, actually started to notice that the stars in the Andromeda galaxy around the edges were moving faster than they should be uh, based on our laws of physics. And not just a little bit faster, 10 times faster. And they concluded back then that there must be something there in order to make those stars move faster. Some kind of external force around the galaxy that's causing these stars to move faster. Now, today we have the theory of dark matter and I, they, that's what they were trying to prove because they've had the theory of dark matter, I believe since the 1930s. And so Vera had sent out to start to prove that dark matter existed by looking at these stars. But it, it just adds to the ambiance of there could be a galactic barrier. Now, interestingly enough, um, there is what they call a galactic halo. And it is absolutely seen in the Sombrero Galaxy. Um, it's, there's the light that surrounds the center of the galaxy and also all the dust clouds and everything around the outside of the galaxy. So it's a perfect example and they believe that there is one on our own Milky Way. So if you were out in space or maybe in the Andromeda galaxy and you were looking at our galaxy edge on just like we are on the Sombrero that you would also see something very similar to what we see when we look at the Sombrero Galaxy. A lot of dark clouds and dust and uh, space debris, old stars that are out there kind of blocking that light on the, the planar view of our spiral galaxy. So this is some pretty interesting stuff. It's not normally what I do in a video. Uh, I'm usually just all about the astrophotography. But I did want to thank my great friend, Dustin Medina, who asked me to take an image of the Sombrero Galaxy because it led me down this rabbit hole 
of galactic barriers and dark matter. And uh, I found out about Vera Rubin, who was really cool uh, lady for the time, you know, in the 1960s, she's the astronomer uh, discovering that the stars are moving faster than they should be. And it was just really cool. I'm gonna be using the Edge HD8 in native F10 mode. So I get the 2032 millimeters of focal distance so that I could better try and capture the, the Sombrero Galaxy. And I'm also going to be using the 2600. And the only reason being is because it's already on my camera and I've only got really one night to do this. And it's already starting to get pretty cold. We've been used to having temperatures in the 80s already around here, um, the upper 70s, lower 80s. And now it's like 36 degrees out. So <laughs> it's pretty chilly. It's supposed to get below freezing tonight with uh, uh, tomorrow a lot of snow showers. So this is it. I got one shot to do this. So I hope that this comes out. Last night didn't go quite as well as I had hoped for. The clouds had come through and the wind really came through hard, and especially while I was taking my red subs. So when I woke up this morning and I started looking through some of my subs, um, I have to throw, it looks like I'm gonna have to throw away a ton of red subs. And so I'm not exactly sure how well the image is gonna come out. I am gonna go ahead and put up an image of the Needle Galaxy after I put up an image of the Sombrero Galaxy, if I can get one to come out. If not, I'll use an older one. But I think that I'll be able to get something out of this. It's just not gonna be as, as good as I had hoped for. Uh, I hope you found this video useful or entertaining in some way. I wanted to say thank you again to my great friend Dustin Medina for, for putting me on to the whole Sombrero Galaxy and the uh, galactic barrier theories and stuff like that. Um, it was a lot of fun. I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.